Hey guys, Anthony 4 before Diesel. We're going to demonstrate here how the transmission torque converter, not locked, locked, and all that sort of thing, how it changes the transmission temps. And if you really want to learn about your transmission and how to look after it, I'll quickly say there's three ways. The best way is to know the temperature it's operating at so you can control that. Um, there's a few other ways, actually. There's four, I lie. There's four. There's uh, things like having a, a torque converter lockup kit. There's things like changing your transmission oil. There's things like having transmission coolers, but the best one is to monitor and know the transmission temperature so you can make adjustments. Now, what adjustments you ask? Well, we've just started the engine a couple of minutes ago, as you can see right in the middle of the picture, and uh, we're gonna go for a bit of a drive now and spend some time. It's uh, currently 1.46 p.m. in the afternoon, and you can see the ATF on the bottom left of the scan gauge down here. 16 degrees so we're going to get it warmed up to normal operating temperature and you'll be able to tell when we come back to you like i've got an assistant i'm holding the camera at the moment but the assistant could be holding the camera soon and it could be a bit you know a bit like this and whatever you get that but the main thing is you'll be able to see the information going to try and train and help you understand what's going on and there'll be maybe some other footage where i'll describe to you what's going on um while this thing isn't in my face anyway let's get it warmed up Okay, so we've been driving along around about, uh, well, it says nine minutes, so not around about, exactly nine minutes, about five k's. The current temperature on the ATF is 43 degrees. Now, one of the first things you may notice happens, now this is a 2022 Land Cruiser Prado, um, LC150 with a 1GD FTV engine with the six-speed automatic. I think it's the A60F or something along those lines, you know the one. Good transmission just depending who does the software for it. And this one, we think it's really good, but then there's pros and cons of different software uh, programming because some people like it slipping and smooth and some people like it locked like myself. To keep it cool, I like it locked. I like it like a manual, and this thing's almost like a manual. Currently, already up to 46 degrees. We're traveling along at 100 kilometers an hour exactly. Um, torque converter is locked, so the heat will only be going up very slowly. The only thing that's heating up the transmission at the moment is the fact that that transmission oil is running through the tank in the radiator that's currently at 86 degrees. Let's have a look and I'll show you these numbers. There you go, see if you can hold it there, thanks mate. See how we go. The main thing is just to show you that the uh, ATF's on 50 and the coolant's on 86. Sorry about the vibration, you get that. Let's go back to the other camera. So what's happening at the moment is, so up until around about 40 degrees, and you might find if you're the software writer for Toyota that it's exactly 40 degrees, but up until about 40 degrees on the transmission temperature, and for those that are asking, it is a scan gauge too, right? Scan gauge, S-C-A-N-G-A-U-G-E, one word, just search scan gauge if you're interested in one, but they do display the transmission temperature after you program it. We've got a separate video on how to program and put in those codes and the codes are available on the Scan Gauge website. But what's happening at the moment is, we'll just get past this round. So as you can see, 54 only on the ATF. You can see the vehicles then. We've been driving for 13 minutes, 10 kilometers. How is it we can drive along and it stays so cool? The 54, 53, the 54 at the bottom of the picture there. I'm going to explain that to you. So one of the first points I'd like to make, as I was saying, as I was saying, while the transmission wants to get to normal operating temperature, now, what's normal operating temperature? Well, it's obvious. Since they run the transmission through the radiator coolant, which is currently 88 degrees, so you get a window there, right? At idle, it's 83, 84. 85 when you're driving, 86, 87, 88, up to about 90, some much higher than that. But if the coolant's normally 85 to 90 degrees and you're running a transmission a, a transmission oil in a separate tank inside the radiator through that cooling system or heating system, it's exactly that. It's a cooling system and a heating system, okay? Just like the engine coolant that uses a thermostat to get to normal operating temperature, you know? That's what it's designed to run at. Now, just for those that are curious, we're doing 110 kilometers in a 110 zone, okay? Um, up until about 40 degrees on that transmission, I noticed it slips a lot. The torque converter doesn't lock, you know, because what it's doing, it's purposely slipping because it wants to warm up the transmission to at least 
just about 40 degrees, which is normal operating temperature minimums, if you know what I mean. So the sooner it gets to 40, the better. You don't want to be running around with a cold engine or a cold transmission. Other items don't matter too much, I suppose, you know, like diffs and stuff like that. But of course, a normal operating temperature is what everything's designed to work at. And those more sensitive items, like the engine and the transmission, they really, you know, they, they need to get up to that operating temperature. So I'll just give you the update. 17 minutes driving. We've got the cruise control set at exactly, look, it's on 115, which is about 110.5 kilometers an hour because, you know, that's another story. 4K, 4.5Ks, that's what they do. Okay, 63 degrees on the ATF. Now, a bit of background information for those people that really want to get themselves educated on this. I've said what happens up to 40, it slips, okay, it slips. We'll get to what happens after 40 in a moment. You may see some other videos in our automatic transmission playlist. We've got a playlist there. It's called Automatic Transmissions. It's got servicing automatic transmissions. It's got a lot of talk about automatic transmissions, how to look after them, their oil, maybe whether you need a cooler or not. Some people do, some people don't. And obviously, whatever the best ways to look after the transmission are. Now, I'm not sure if there is a video in there. I think there's not. At one stage, I remember, this is a sort of regular trip we do up the Calder Highway headed towards Bendigo. Towards the start, we're just here near um, Sunbury and Gisborne. There's quite a few hills, and uh, I'm just going to deactivate the cruise control because this one, this whatever it is, this Mercedes thing or whatever, it's got one of those start things that looks like a Mercedes, but I don't know. It can't seem to maintain the speed limit. Usual sort of problem up a hill, but that doesn't matter for us. We're on 66 on the ATF. That's all you need to know. But I thought I did a video or a post of some sort because one of the first times I did this trip with a scan gauge in the vehicle in the 2019, let's be clear here, in the previous vehicle, 2019, which is the same software from that when the 1GDs came out in 2015 through to when they were remapped sometime in 2020. You need to work that out, okay? In that vehicle, driving up this road, doing similar to what we're doing now, cruise control set, this type of thing, the temperature easily got up to 117 degrees, okay? 117 was around about where the torque converter went. The salt, and maybe something in the software again that said enough's enough, and it locks up, and it's still hard to lock up, but eventually it locks up, and then the temperatures start dropping because a torque converter slipping is the key ingredient to make your transmission oil warm, hot, hotter than, hotter than desirable, let's say, right? Okay, you want to keep it, what do you want to keep it at? You want to keep it around normal operating temp. 80 to 90 is great. Up to 100 isn't a problem, but I've just got this thing, it's just my funny thing. When it gets to, uh, you know, 100, that's enough. So for me, when I see 100 on a transmission, I've been playing in the sand dunes, going up some big hills in the high country. It's been doing some work, and I might see 102, 103, 104. That is typically in hot weather. That would be in the middle of summer. Now, we've got a whole heap of cars in both lanes behind us banking up, getting a bit anxious. Uh, one behind us, so it's easy to get distracted. But this guy now, he's moving over without uh, indicating, but he got there in the end. Okay, so it makes us look bad, but, you know, he's the guy in front. So we're going to move it along now. He's finally moved over. But 70 degrees on the ATF is what you'd like to know. I'll show you again soon. 20 minutes driving, 70 on the ATF. This video could possibly go for another 10, 15, 20 minutes because it's really important. The background information, as I said, I thought I did a video, but I don't think I did. I think I took a series of photos, or of course, had my passenger here take the series of photos showing that transmission tip going 100, 111, oh sorry, 110, 111, 112, and literally every 10 seconds going up a degree, or even more than that. Okay, now these are the typical hills you'd come onto, and the torque converter would be unlocked. Okay, now we're just clear of the vehicle. Some people like to tell me how to drive that, so I don't sit in the right lane unless there's no one behind me or unless I'm passing the vehicle. And generally, I do the speed limit, so it's a non issue. But plenty of people want to do over the speed limit, that's fine, but they just need to wait for us people that want to do the speed limit if we're passing. We are passing the vehicle, we are overtaking. Okay, we don't need to do 10, 15 k's over to get past faster because that suits you. So there you go, a little bit of driving etiquette as well. So just settle down. If, uh, actually it looks like someone we know, there we go, in a 
Hilux. He was having a good look anyway. So there you go. If you're a subscriber in your Hilux there, I say good day to, uh, there he is, someone <laughs> up the road. Anyway, he's got rid of the uh, Hilux on. So if you have a look on one of our Facebook groups, you need to do a bit of searching. You search, when you want to search our groups or our YouTube channel, you use the minimal words like, for example, transmission or ATF or scan gauge or what we'll be looking at here, torque converter. So you might just put the word torque. You will find a post. I did it myself this morning on this group. Are you ready? One of our Facebook groups. It's called hashtag 1GDForeverCrew. So it's hashtag number one and then capital G, capital D, capital F, 1GD, and then forever, the rest of the word, crew with a capital C, all one word, no spaces, hashtag 1GD forever crew. If you get in there, if you've got a 1GD, you're gonna learn a whole heap of information. We're currently up to 74 on the ATF, and to be quite honest, I don't think it's gonna get much warmer for this whole trip, and I'm gonna tell you why by the end of this video. I'm giving, I'm delivering you information, maximum detail so you can understand this whole arrangement i'm just going to go on and on so if you haven't got the patience and you want to be sort of you know uh, left in the dark and treated like a mushroom you can uh, do it you got to do thanks for watching smash the like if you learned something and you're happy anyway and you're going to watch it later it's probably a good idea to press the like because then you can go to your like videos and go that's right and you'll see the red line i've only watched a little bit of that one i've got to get back to it and subscribe to the bell on because we're here nobody's paying us to tell you how the transmission works how to keep it cool why you don't need a transmission cooler what and things you do and don't need we're giving you the honest the god honest truth about what we believe and the reasons why okay so if you look at that previous post you'll see a whole heap of photos that went 100 to 11 12 13 14 and i can tell you not just then numerous times it was consistent one trip there may even be a video i drove half an hour in six to nine degree ambient temperatures it was cold in the middle of winter friday afternoon getting dark around melbourne time heading out west up the pentland hills yes but you know what the bloody thing should still be running cold i can drive the 120 and keep it down to 60 degrees for an hour all right doing the same thing so just to let you know we're up to 75 on the atf i'll show you soon this is important information. It doesn't matter what you can see. We're driving up the road. Just so you know what we're doing. We're going up hills in the 2019. I guarantee you. In a 2000 and after that 19 and an 18 and a 17 and 16 and a 15. Going up here, the torque converter would be unlocked. You'd be over 100 degrees quite easily. Probably 110 and rising because that's what we saw going up here. Numerous trips. There may have been one lot of photos. There may have been one video. You might have seen it. Maybe you didn't. Maybe I've lost it. Maybe I put the wrong name on it. None of that really matters. All that matters is they slip and they get hot. We'll explain more at the end. Okay. You can have a look at those photos. Hashtag 1GD Forever Crew. Okay, this vehicle from 2020. They put a big... It's the same engine. I don't care what they say. It's the same engine. Right? It's had a few changes. It's been remapped. They might have done a bit of fine tuning here and there on a bit of the machining, but not much. It's got a bigger turbo, it's different. Let's just call it a different turbo that gives it a bit more lag on takeoff, to be quite honest. But it gives it a little bit more power and a little bit more. Definitely, you can notice the torque. The torque's there, and the transmission soft. We'll call it the transmission remap, if you like. The transmission remap is what I'm going to refer to it as. The transmission remap because it's completely. It's the same transmission but it's completely different, right? So we've been, you've seen us go up and down the hills, it's time to show you the view. There it is, right? Bada bing, bada boom, right? 77 on the ATF, 25 minutes driving up and down all those hills. The other one would be, mate, that'd be 110, 115, crazy. And the fuel economy would have been about 17 litres per 100 k's. Check that out. 11.8 litres per 100 k's. So once we get a bit further into this video, we might talk about the fuel economy as well. And I'll already tell you, it's already down to 11.7. The other vehicle, the older vehicles, the older Prados, in my opinion, are gutless. They don't have the power, they don't have the torque. They don't even pull as good as my heavy loaded up old 120 with over 400,000 k's on the vehicle, right? With the all-terrain tyres, the lift kit, the ARB bull bar, the roof racks, the awnings, the rear storage system, the underbody protection, the heavy-duty side steps, all that stuff. 
and it races off and gets on the on-ramp quicker than the 2019 nice light GX. Yes, that's right. To, in my opinion, like I think it's a fact, but it's opinion until we do some actual, you know, dyno tune is what people want. You want to put it on the dyno to see what it does. Well, I put it on the seat of the pants. I put it next to uh, the 1GD Hilux, which was nice and light. Put the 120 next to that. We blew it away at a number of sets of lights. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's fact. The 1GD is a gutless engine. It's unacceptable. And same to the transmission software. Sorry to the people that own one. That the best thing you can do is listen to understand how to keep it cool. To protect it. Right now, just for anyone's information, our current coolant temperature is 87 degrees and our current ATF is 79 degrees. Like I said, it's not going to go much higher. Going to get into that in a bit more detail. At the moment, I'm proving to you what I say is true. When I said, look how hot this thing gets, everybody says, ah, but this and ah, but that. This vehicle hasn't got a tow bar, neither did the other one. It will later. Further testing, we're going to whack on a tow bar in a caravan at some point down the road going to do a whole heap more testing and by then you probably have the hybrids will be out and you'll no need to buy one of these anyway but what I say is if you're going to buy a newer Prado you're probably better off just to buy a new one or stick with the last of the best of 1KDs I haven't changed from that personally if you haven't already got one I wouldn't buy a 1GD 15 to 20 until that remap in other videos we show you how to work out which ones had the changes the remap the different turbo with the different software right it happened in 2020 what month I don't know but I'm going to show you things under the bonnet eventually probably not in this video because I'm driving right ATF's on 80 degrees guys so it's sitting around 80 so it's certainly warmer than uh, some of the other transmissions like this that torque converters locked but let's just keep an eye on it torque converters locked in sixth gear okay and I believe the torque converter will lock for, be locked for the majority of the trip where with the, two, the 2019 nice light GX it was unlocked at the right here where we are here we're on a slight under it's slightly uphill the load has gone up to 67 68 71 I'm telling you now in the older ones you get a load reading around 70 that torque converter is unlocked even if it goes back to fifth it doesn't even lock it stays unlocked it's revving away it's using fuel at the moment we're on 11.5 litres per hundred case same car it's a GX no tow bar same same flat roller Titan refract, same KO2s, you know, not the same set, but same size, standard size tyres, 265, 65. We've got a whole heap of information in our fuel economy players if you want to know the facts about what's what and how this is a direct comparison. No, we didn't have them side by side, but I've driven the vehicles up and down here and many other places that much. I know what goes on, okay? The transmission in that thing and the fuel economy. There was nothing wrong with the vehicle, it's just how they are. You could get good economy out of it. You could get seven or eight litres per 100k driving around in 60 and 70 zones, right? But look guys, 81 on the ATF. I'm just gonna keep telling you what it is. We'll show you again later. 30 minutes driving so far. So, why is it staying cool? Well, it's really simple. I've already said it earlier in the video and many other videos. Check out that automatic transmission playlist. Understand that the thing that makes the heat in your transmission initially is warming it up. Remember we talked about that up to 40 degrees, they even let it slip a little bit to make some heat. Once it gets to 40, you can feel it lock. Now I don't know, I'm not the software engineer that wrote the software, I don't know if at 40 it locks the same as it does under the same load as it does when the, when the uh, transmission's 80 degrees or whether it changes gradually. That could be a possibility, do you know what I mean? Like they may go, okay, at 40, let's get it to lock, but only under light conditions. Uh, once you give it a certain amount more load, then it unlocks again. I don't know, okay? It's hard to tell. It locks really well, is all I can tell you. Now, on the negative side, some people say, oh, but what about the vibration and the droning? It's true that in fourth gear, you'll come to some hills, and if you're only doing about 60, and it's in fourth and it's locked, you know, when you leave a manual in the gear a little bit too high and you get that sort of shuddering, Yes, you get that. You do get that a little bit. It doesn't bother me. It's still got enough torque to pull it up the hill. If you don't like it, just tap it across. It'll go into third. Happy days, right? It's rare that that happens. I would rather that and a nice cool transmission like this. We're currently up to 83. This is almost proving me wrong. Not wrong. We're right. But I'm surprised it even got to 83. This is absolutely crazy that it's got to 83. If we were driving our 120 Prado, it would most likely be on about 78 degrees because I'll tell you what happens, right? So from 40, what warms up the transmission?
running through the remember it's running through the corn the corn's 87 so it's got no choice but to become the temperature of what's around it if you like so the transmission is running through this hot coolant at 86 degrees now it depends what 86 no, it depends what side of the radiator and all these things depends exactly how hot the coolant is this sort of thing we've got a, we're just doing about the same speed as this one so it's like do we move over or not yeah don't worry you might think i'm sitting in the right lane but there's nobody there so we're going to go for it so that we're not sitting too close behind this one even though it's going to take ages for me to get past right so don't worry about being, being my driving instructor i know to drive no one's behind me and if someone comes up behind me out of nowhere 30 k's an hour faster than the speed limit I'm not in a hurry, they can go flying past. If they come up slowly, then there'll be time for me to move over or whatever. And you know what, if I'm right next to this car, they're just gonna have to be patient for a minute because I am currently overtaking now, just happening slowly at about one kilometer an hour difference. And guess what, it's a Prado. Maybe he's tuned in to Oz Prado crew. Maybe he's tuned in to 4 before diesel, maybe not. Anyway, if you're not, you're missing out. This is an important video. What makes heat is the torque converter slipping. Our torque converter here isn't slipping, it's locked, so it's not making any heat. What's making heat? The only thing that's making heat in this transmission is it running through the coolant. As we already said, I've got to keep repeating myself so people understand it. So many people don't understand it. This video is for the people that want to understand it and they don't mind me repeating it two, three, four, five, or six times. So they go, bada bing, I got it. It's beautiful there he is happy driver two hands on the wheel mate he looks too busy to be on Oz Prado crew or four before diesel he's just a retail customer went into the dealership paid the full price got the uh, ARB bull no it's got the Toyota bull but he didn't even go to ARB it's got the Toyota it's wobbling around I can see it there I'm having a look at that little peak over yeah wobbling around you know and it's just shaking around and we're just going this is beautiful anyway that's a whole nother story isn't it Right, 83 still on the ATF now, so perhaps it's going to sit on 83 all day. I'll let you know, I'll show you in a minute. We've been driving 34 minutes, 11.1 litres per 100 k's, right? We're going, we're still going uphill, guys. This is heading from Melbourne to Bendigo, 80 k's out of Bendigo. It's up and downhill, it's mainly uphill. There's a lot of uphills, you get a better economy run usually coming back. It all depends on headwinds and tailwinds also, you've got to take that into account. Today we've got virtually no wind, it's not worth talking about. There's no side wind crosswind tailwind headwind or anything we've got no wind today this is why today is a perfect test there's not too much traffic on the road so people aren't going to upset our flow too much because if you're speeding up slowing down you know that's going to manipulate the results right we've got 84 on the atf at the moment 84 87 on the coolant 84 on the atf i'm telling you now that other vehicle it would have been all over the joint and on that last little hill now it's flat we're on the flat now but that last little hill it would have been unlocked I promise you it would have been spent most it spent most of its time over 100 degrees now I'm not saying that that's the end of the world if you look at that transmission playlist either in there or on the 1GD group one of those on Facebook we, we showed a sample of the oil at 60,000 kilometers because we showed the torque converter slipping that much and all these temperatures at 117 you'd be going oh no it's going to be black and cooked and wrecked no the transmission's not wrecked and the oil's not wrecked either at this point because I did even though we did some videos and demonstrated and we let it go and have to see what it did we did a lot of management and management is manually selecting gears okay here we go we've got a hill so go back another gear or back it off a little bit to get it to lock and then gently get on the gas again and it was painful having to manage the vehicle it really was and that's why besides COVID prices being able to get your money back for the vehicle and whatever it's like you know what let's upgrade because this is what we need to do so we can tell you guys now the, the new product since 2020 with the remap it's certainly acceptable now there's a number of issues you could have and that's covered you've got to watch a lot of videos before you decide what Prado or Hilux or any other vehicle you're going to buy and I promise that I'm going to talk about other makes and models as well and you can go buy the Mitsubishi if you like there's a lot of advantages and disadvantage advantage you know what, what's that isn't there a warranty called something or other advantage there's a lot of pros and cons advantages disadvantages whatever of buying other brands and Mitsubishi's for me I'll stick with Toyota I want the most reliable I still think they're good value for money even though all the prices are going up rapidly at the moment that's another video totally separate now just an update 87 on the coolant 83 on the ATF so to me it seems the ATF has settled and I'm staying in the right lane simply because there's no cars behind me okay I'm coming up behind 
deposits, it's back to 84. So this one, this is the first time I've monitored this transmission temperature. I've got the scan gauge there. We can use automotive scan tools to do this, but you know what? You gotta have them sitting around. The good thing about the scan gauge just sitting in there, it's nice and neat, it's there when you need it, and you don't notice it when you don't need it, but it's there all the time, anytime you wanna take a glance. So I do like that about it. So, the reason it's settled in at 84, so we know the only way it's making heat is I drive on the edge of the line as I go past trucks, that's right. Maximum clearance, what? You know, they're on their phone, they swerve across. I'm still alive, yes! And I look in the mirror too while, as I'm going past. Yeah, they come at me, I'm ready to make take evasive action. You've got to watch out for everybody on the road these days, especially since phones, right? We talk about that in other videos. Anyway, I hope you like a chit chat, it's chit chat day and it's maximum transmission education day. I can't re re reiterate enough that you, how much you need to go and watch all the videos till the end of that trans automatic transmission playlist on 4B4 Diesel. There's probably some other videos on 4B4 Adventures. Maybe that's where I put that other video that showed the transmission getting so hot unnecessarily all because of the lack of satisfactory software for the transmission. Okay, economy 10.6 litres per 100 k's, uh, 38 minutes driving. Okay, so I have a vehicle behind me, it's an Audi, it looks faster than me, he's just come past the truck, I'm clear of the truck, I'm moving into the left lane, let's see if he can get past before I get to the next vehicle, and we can keep it consistent, back to 83 on the ATF, right, so it's jumping between 83 and 84, maximum information here guys, right, and I'm going to need to stop for a drink in a sec as well, just for a sec, how about we do that now, alright, I've had my drink, that's awesome, thanks, and there goes that Audi, so only a small delay, 88 on the coolant, 84 on the ATF. We're going up a hill. Torque converter stays locked in sixth. If this thing unlocked in sixth, it goes back to fifth and locks again immediately, therefore making no heat. Do you get it yet? The torque converter slipping. Think of it at like your tires slipping down the road. If they're turning, they're not as hot. If you do a skid, that's slipping, that's skidding down the road, and then you let the tire turn half a turn, 180 degrees, and touch it, you're going to burn your fingers. It's going to be hot because it's slipped, right? Something slipping gets hot. When it's locked, it's not getting hot. Nothing else there can make heat other than putting it through the coolant. If they wanted it to run cold, they wouldn't have run it through the radiator. They would have had a standalone coolant. The bloody thing would have only made heat from the torque converter and run it about 40, 50, or 60. Now, some people think that's okay. Toyota are the engineers, they want it running it in the 80 to 90 degree range, then that's what normal is and that's where it needs to run. So running an auto cooler can actually cause your vehicle, especially if you're doing lots of stop start short trips and you live down in the southern states of Australia or New Zealand, you know, we've got news, plenty of New Zealand viewers, anywhere else that gets cold, top, bottom, left, right, whatever it is, you could be, you know, reducing the life of your transmission, not as much as it getting hot, but it's not ideal. Now, I don't think it's a big concern. It's not something to worry about. We probably shouldn't have even mentioned it. But I just want to let you know, 88 is the coolant temp, 84 is the ATF temp, right? Did you get it yet? The torque converter, what makes the heat? And it going through the radar, so nothing else. So this is what we've got. Why is it? It's on 85 now, ATF's on 85. So why is it on 85? Well, maybe there's a bit more heat I haven't actually taken a look or thought about where the coolant temperature sensor is. So maybe there's a little bit more heat in the engine after going up a hill. And then what's in the radiator is a little bit warmer than uh, that coolant water temperature, right? Uh, and therefore that's why the ATF, um, here we go, we've got a phone call. Okay, we just had a little phone call. Coolant 86, ATF 84. Funny that. So are you telling me for the whole trip where the other vehicle regularly sat on over 100 degrees, and quite often up to 117 degrees and got up to a 17 litres, 100 k's, took a long time to come back to 15, 14. By the time you got to Bendigo, you'd be lucky if it was down to 12 or 13 or 14. And this thing's already down to 10.3. And the ATF hasn't gone higher than 85, currently on 84. Yes, that's right. So this is why I'm trying to explain it to you. It's important so you don't waste money on Transmission fluid changes that are unnecessary because that happens sometimes. I think more people are not getting it done than should be getting it done. But if you look after it, understand it, look after it. You could in invest in something like this scan gauge here, right? 250 bucks, whatever it is. Handy tool, any DTCs ever. Bang, you know the code, you can Google it, you can hit it on our Facebook groups and you get some answers and get some help. You can look at your other readings, you can look at your ATF. You can manage it so that you don't 
don't need a cooler, you don't need a, a lock-up kit, you don't need an oil changes often because you know what's what with it. We demonstrated even getting the other transmission, of the 60,000K one, 2019, it was a little bit brown, it was ready brown, it was still in very good condition, so don't panic, it's not the end of the world. If you've done less than 100,000 k's, it's okay, you can get a transmission oil change. We're going to get to that step soon, so just relax. I know it's a long one, please be patient, it's important. Repeat it again. The only heat through the radiator and the torque converter. So we're sitting on 85 at the moment. Automatic transmission temperature is 85 degrees. Coolant temperature 87 degrees. Makes sense, doesn't it? Because the coolant is running at that temperature and the transmission oil is going through it, not mixing. Don't, let's be clear there's a tank within the radiator that's thin that the heat can transfer through between those materials. And in the Toyotas, their quality, they don't have problems, okay? It's the Fords and Holdens that have them. So all the people that want to put in the comments going, oh, you know, get rid of that, and I put a stand. Good luck to you. Did you listen to the video? Those people, they're probably gone by now. This is an education for a lot of people, and that's what it's all about. Right, so why is it running cooler? Why hasn't it got to 87? Well, that's quite simple. Why do you think the transmission, like the engine, has got a thin steel pan on it? You know, some cars run alloy and they've got fins on them and whatever. Alloy, you hit it on something, it breaks, a piece falls out like a bloody broken Easter egg at Easter, right? And then what happens? All the M&Ms go everywhere, Smarties, whatever they are, right? Well, that's what happens with your oil. You hit alloy, bang, the piece falls out. You hit tin, it doesn't fall out. It may damage something, you might not, you might get lucky and don't hit it anyway. That's why car on make underbody protection, UBP, underbody protection. And the Hilux bash plate will be really soon. Okay, but for the Pratos, it's all there. It's awesome, it's the best. So, 88 and 85, you know what I'm talking about. So, the pan, what's happening right now? We're driving in outside temperature of 13 degrees. Now, this pan, on this transmission, the six speed, perhaps is thicker than what's on the A750F and perhaps it's thicker than what the A40s and the 43s are, the four speed autos, right? Because I'm gonna tell you a little bit more of the story. So on this vehicle, this is actually running quite warm compared to, so what's happening is, you've got your transmission oil, it's getting warmed up by your slipping torque converter, if you eliminate that, it's getting warmed up by your coolant, and that sort of says the maximum it can go to is the coolant temperature, right? Which we're kind of testing it now, but I'm going to test this by driving it for tens of thousands of kilometres, and I'm going to come back and tell you what happened. You know, the other thing I don't get about people's driving is they go slow in the right lane and then they move over and speed up. How am I meant to go past you? Right, so you go, you're going slow, that's fine, go slow, just move over. But you move over and speed up, how am I meant to then go past you? I've increased my speed 4Ks an hour since that car moved over. I notice it moved over and sped up. Okay, here we go, bring it back. Okay, see, so distracted, I am driving here, I'm sorry. Okay, we're getting past it about a K an hour, maybe two, so we've all set it in there. We're back at our, you know, our setting. Back at our setting. Anyway, it's all good. Get out here, you go. Have a nice day. Um, doing exactly the same speed as me. You get that. This is always, a, it's always a problem on the road like this, isn't it, when two cars are doing about the same speed, but, you know, we've got to just make allowances and sort it out. It's all good. No need to get cranky. Some people get cranky. It's all good. Alright, so the air's blowing. What? Through, while I've been talking, you know, dribbling on, as people say, dribble, 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 and I hope you like it. Some people love it. That's why I'm doing it. Um, 10.1 litres, 100 k's, right? Cruising along in my automobile, right? Outside, 14 degrees. 14 degrees is blowing across the bottom of that pan. Now, it's not doing the greatest job, but that is what's keeping it cooler, right? That's what's keeping it cooler than the coolant temperature. Coolant temp currently, 88, ATF, 85. So it seems to have settled in, I keep saying this, at about 84, 85. I'm going to let you know the highs it went up to. We'll show you again in a minute, but I'll just give you the numbers right now. Outside temperature is 14. We're on 10 litres per 100 k's even. Average speed 91 k's an hour. We've been driving 48 minutes. This could be a long video. Bloody awesome. And yeah, so 48 minutes. 
We've done 73 k's on this trip so far. We haven't seen higher than 85, and I guarantee you, we would have seen, if we did the same thing and set the cruise control in the 2019, we would have seen 117 degrees. Look, I think maybe 118, 1718 was the highest I ever saw. So I never saw 20, 21, 25. And you know what? <clears throat> Toyota and the oil manufacturers may say that 117 is okay and maybe that's why they let it slip because it helps keep EGTs down and they weren't sure if the engine could handle it and now that four or five years has gone by and they've analyzed some engines that have done hundreds of thousands of cases maybe I'm just making stuff up they said this engine's good we did well with this this is awesome these new pistons the you know the heat blah 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 anyway and they said let's give it a bit more power and see what happens then so it's kind of the next guinea pig if you like right and there'll be the next one and the next one and maybe they're done really well and that's awesome and maybe we can make rocket, sh rocket ships out of these engines right but by now we understand what's heating up the transmission so how does the auto cooler the auto cooler works it's another separate cooler so then your transmission all goes through your radiator and then through the cooler through the cooler then the radiator people will argue which way it's got to be and which way is better <coughs> and all I'm going to say to save myself talking any more than I need to because I'm getting a dry throat again negligible not worth talking about but it's a separate set of cooling fins right that all that air blows through and it certainly knocks some degrees out of it and it could knock 10 15 20 degrees could, some people say it knocks about 20 degrees out of it so that would mean instead of driving along now at normal ATF vibrating temp of 85 on a perfectly set up software transmission well done Toyota legends finally because that other one was pathetic right You'd be running at 65 which is okay but it's a bit cool so you've just spent money to make it run cooler and you didn't need to and it's also made it less reliable because you've got extra aftermarket hoses and clamps and things in there that hoses could slip off right I just want to be clear here that's a fact of the matter what you've got to talk about a lockup kit aftermarket crap switches buttons wires I don't like crap in the vehicle I like to keep it simple who's with me right minimalist please write minimalist in the comments if you're a minimalist and if you stay this long so I'm a minimalist and I'm up for every word. I hope you like it because it's, I'm telling you now, mate. You told me, I'm telling you, you're telling me, I'm telling you. It's awesome information and you need to have a lot of time for this one. But is your transmission important, mate? Six, seven thousand dollars worth. Is it worth an hour? That's what I want to know. Is it worth an hour? Maybe that's what I'll call the video. Watch this till the end if your transmission's worth seven thousand dollars to you. That could work. Let me see if I can remember to call that by the end of the video. By now you should be getting the picture now. In the 120 Prados, and I haven't owned a 150 with the 1KD. I'd like to. I nearly did, but I didn't, so that's okay. Um, I'm keeping the 120, but I've driven it a lot with the scan gauge in there, right? It hasn't got a scan gauge in there at the moment. At the moment it's got the Autofix 3210, so you don't have to buy a scan gauge. You can get whatever you want. I'll just tell you about some products that I like, what works, what they do. The Autofix does not do transition temperature. We've asked them for over a year now. Transmission temperature, transmission tension. They said, too busy, too busy, too busy. Well, guess what? Perhaps scan gauge get to sell a whole heap of scan gauges now instead of Autofix selling a whole heap of Autofix. Well, they both sell a whole heap, but guess what? It's like an election, right? You know, it goes one way or it goes the other. That's what's happening at the moment. The scan gauge is kind of looking good. It's looking good on the 150, I'm telling you. It's sitting there, it's looking nice and neat. It's about time I showed you again. 9.8 litres, 100 k's, 52 minutes. 84 and 85 look at that coolant's gone down to 84 we're going downhill the thermostat was open there was plenty of airflow the engine wasn't working it's back up to 85 atf still on 85 i'm going to show you a minute and we're going to wrap it up right so what were the other ways i said you can look after transmission transmission cooler on this car you don't need it on the older one gd you need a new car you don't need a transmission cooler you need a new car you need a transmission remap sell it take it back to toyota it's just not acceptable if you compare the two most people that work there at the dealership aren't going to know what you talking about and they're going to think you're crazy and you're going to wish you didn't watch my videos and start to understand things in life and if you start to understand things you better subscribe and like and turn your bell into everything I do because I'm into understanding things learning things and helping people understand things that I believe that I solidly believe are correct so transmission cooler nah that's a band-aid lock-up kit yeah that solves the problem <coughs> and it can be handy for other transmission can always make heat also make heat coming down hill if you're in low range on a steep hill in the high country you're coming down the slips in the opposite direction it still makes heat the transmission temperature will go up but again it's not usually too much so the lock up will help your speed keep your speed down stop that slip to help keep the temperatures down i don't know where to buy one of those if someone watches this video and they've got an awesome product people like easy plug
plug and play, nice and easy. You've got a transmission lock-up kit or that's easy to install or installers in every 20k radius in every state of Australia or whatever country, let us know because it's something that could be considered for some vehicles, not for this one, right? This one, all it needed was a scan gauge so people could monitor the temps. And then people say, oh, but when I'm towing, I can tell you right now, when you're towing with this vehicle, the torque converter is going to stay locked, especially if you drop back to fourth and fifth, whatever gear it is here, the book will probably say fourth, but there's a few variables to that. The key thing is that you're not making it labour, and that's the other bonus of the scan gauge for those that waited to the end. You can get the EGTs up there, there's three EGT sensors, one, two, three. You can have your ATF sitting up there, you can have your battery up there like I did the load the corn tip, or you can have the EGTs, all three of them, or you can have one of them, pick the hottest one, whichever one you want to know about, right? And while you're towing, you can make some adjustments to look after the vehicle to make it last so that you don't have to add on aftermarket transmission calls. And by the way, if you want one and you've decided you need one, kon.com.au have got the best transmission coolers because they custom make Australian made stainless steel the brackets for the transmission coolers, right? It's all awesome stuff, kon.com.au. Transmission lockup kit we don't know about all changes. You can use the Penrite, the Penrite LV, low viscosity is the one for these vehicles. You can use that FS as well. Anyway, that's another story. Let's not go there. Just use the LV, right? It says it on the bottle. Toyota. Okay. I'm going to put it on recirculate because up here, because they're holy. Oh, I know someone's burning off. It's going to say, look like someone's been doing burnouts, but uh, that's all right. Someone's doing a little burn off. That's okay. Good time of the year to do it. No wind. Remember what I said? No wind. That's why the smoke's hanging around. Now you've got the evidence of no wind. That's why you hang around. I'm not telling you stories. I've got a tailwind and I'm not telling you about it. We're on 9.8 litres, 100 Ks. I'm going to show you soon. Okay, so I think we've just about nailed it. What I was saying is the 120 Prado, if I was doing this, it would have settled in at about 78. So possibly what happens there is it's getting better airflow to the pan. The pan's a bit thinner and it's having a better cooling effect at the transmission pan level. Now I have to think, but I'm pretty sure these six speeds, they might have a thicker pan on them, do they? I'd have to have a look and because guess what, you know, have I pulled one off? No. Have I serviced one? Well, I've only taken a sample of oil out of mine. I haven't serviced or changed oil on a six speed. They're only a few years old. And people, you know, they tend to not bring them to us anyway. We're pretty well full up. We can't do everyone. And most people know we're one KD uh, change injector specialist, BFE kits and all, a few other things while you're there maybe. But you know, we're done mate. There's only one of me. We've got a few assistants, but not many. It's all about watching the videos, getting yourself educated. This is just one piece, although this is a massive piece of the million piece jigsaw puzzle. This is a big piece of the transmission. I still urge you to go and have a look at the transmission playlist and have a look at all those videos. Maybe try and find the oldest ones in there to the newest one. And it'll all come together and you will be an understanding transmission specialist, okay? Transmission all changes, probably every 100,000 k's, depends how you drive. If you don't have a scan gauge and it's slipping its head off, definitely every 100,000 k's, maybe less. That was me managing it, it was pretty good, 60k. You never get all the oil out, so there's no point wasting 20, 30, 40 litres of oil trying to get it all out. You never get it all out. You just want to do more regular changes. Now, coolant up that slight hill, 89, ATF's up to 86. I've seen 86 so far, okay, 86. I just think that the pan must be thicker and it's not getting as much cooling effect because as I said, the 120, it would be on about 78 degrees. Sometimes it goes a bit lower, depends on ambient temp, but on a day like this, I, look, we can do this. We just need to get a scan gauge into the 120 and we can do the same exercise for all the 1KD owners that have got 5-speed autos. Now, the V6, the autos get hot. That's why they've got the standard auto cooler there. That helps come standard with because they rev more. They've got more power. They unlock the transmission really quickly and they've got more power and torque so they're constantly revving and making it slip even more and they get hot really quick so to keep them cool so I had to put a standard factory auto cooler there and that's great and it does a pretty good job okay depending on what conditions whether it's going to be warmer or cooler than a 1kd it's going to be warmer most likely than these things because this software is just awesome so Look, if, you, if you're really hard on the transmission, sometimes you're going to need to do a transmission flush every uh, 50,000 k's. If you do a lot of short trips, wrong driving, a lot of off-road, a lot of lower range work, probably every 50,000 k's. I've seen some, I saw a really fit, one of the worst ones I've ever seen at 40,000 k's. Lots of off-road work, it was nearly 10 years old. Um, a lot of low range work, weekend car and low range hard work. 
and uh, I think the driver said, oh, that track was easy, I didn't even have to put it in low range. No, don't do that. Put it in low range as soon as you get to a hill. As soon as you go on the dirt, you know, let your tyres down, low range, that sort of, unless it's high speed stuff, right? Now, look, if you're in soft sand, go to low range. ATF's currently on 86. I think we've covered all the Hilux. Okay, the 2013 Hilux full speed, it unlocks really easy, it's kind of quite bad. The only sense that we pick up on there in the transmission, the one that's there, it's torque converter related, so it gets hot really quick. So it's not really the pan temperature, so you've got to make allowances for that. <coughs> you can estimate the pan temperature from watching the fluctuations of the torque converter temperature. Okay, so what you do is, oh, you see, oh, look, it's getting really uh, hot really quick, 80, 90, 95, 100, and then you back off the next thing, you know, it's 90, 85, so it wasn't really the pan temperature, if you know what I mean, because pans don't change that quickly, right? So if you if it goes up, if you leave it, it could go up to 115, 120, just like the 1GD, really slipping badly, to be quite honest. <coughs> so you need to manage it, you need to sort of, um, there you go, I'll touch that one, because I'll lean over to grab my water bottle, a little drink here. So, I don't know where I was up to. So, all the vehicles are different. That's why you need to have a look at yours. And people are saying, okay, so how do I know when the torque converter is locked? Well, good question. That's a hard one. To, I'm going to have to do a head cam for that one. And that'll have to be a separate video. But let's say you'll feel it. When you drive off, it'll go first, second. And to be quite honest, in this six speed, I've got a feeling that it even locks the torque converter in third. I can't confirm that yet, but there's been some times where I'm driving where I go, oh, I reckon I felt that lock in third. So you'll be accelerating away. Look, how about you do it this way? You hold the gears, you just put it in fourth. You feel it go first, second, third. And when you're in fourth and you can see, as you push it hard enough, eventually the revs will either stay steady and it'll go up with the engine speed, or the revs will go up faster than the engine speed. It'll sort of unlock and pop up a little bit and the revs will increase a lot more than what the engine speed is, right? And then when you back off and then you feel something, you feel it lock. It's really hard to explain. I kind of have to have you in the vehicle here. So I'm going to try. I've done it in a video in that transmission playlist, I'm sure. And I'll do it again. It takes time. So smash the like button. Hope you love this one. And you go and watch that transmission playlist and share the information with some people. Probably not this video first because they haven't got the patience. This is a special one for people that have got the patience. Okay. Okay. All the transmissions are different. A scan gauge is a good thing to have there to be able to read and clear your DTCs, read your transmission temperatures. The key thing you're going to be able to do without holding a big automotive scan tool. There are scan tools that do that. I'm about to do some more videos soon showing you some different scan tools that are options for people that might want to do injector conversation codes and pilot learns and stuff like that and be able to have a look at their trend. Because you might just want to look at your transmission temporarily and then go, okay, now I know what it does and not have the scan gauge there. But I've got to tell you, it's really handy to have there. We're coming into Roadworks 80 and that upsets things. Things are going to change. So what we're going to do, I'll just show you. I'll tell you first, 9.6 litres per 100 k's, average 95 k's an hour, an hour and one minute. It's 97 k's we've done. Coolant's on 87 and the ATF's on 85. I'll there show you. Go. There you go, guys. This isn't Ripley's Believe It or Not. This is uh, what it is, right? You can see there, 9.6 litres per 100 k's. 9.6 and that'll get better that'll just keep getting better because what ruined it at the start was the cold start the roundabouts and the uh, uphill runs so this on flat ground it's going to get better so yeah it gets really good economy really for what it is um, but you can't expect you get better with road tires and as you add your mods it'll get worse look at that like I said to you top left 88 for the coolant 85 for the ATF I think that's the hottest we saw and uh, I reckon that's a video I've talked enough Thanks for staying with me if you did. Remember to put those comments and subscribe, turn the bell on, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Okay, for those people that wanted a bit more, I know it wasn't enough for some people. I'm not gonna go back to the dash view anymore. I'm just gonna uh, tell you a bit more information. So, um, what else was I gonna say? I was gonna I said I'm gonna include it in the end, uh, if I remember, and I'm struggling. So, 85 is the highest we saw the transmission get to. As suspected, that's awesome. Now, there's some people, they just sort of don't know what's going on. When I say they don't know what's going on, what I mean is, okay, um, what, they don't know what's going on. What's going on? Well, you know, they go, oh, but I've got one of the remap, and it's 
still gets to 120 when towing. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how you could make this trip. I would struggle to get this thing up to 100. So stay tuned. There's going to be more photos, more videos, whether it's on our Facebook groups, on these videos, or on our other YouTube channel, 4 Before Adventures. Stay tuned there as well. Might have been a bit quiet there lately, but I'll tell you what, there's going to be some information popping up there. And, uh, of course, a bit of entertainment as well. So... It's all about knowing the temperature, then you can go, okay, this is what I need to do. What are my options? Transmission, software, remap, if that's possible. Um, torque converter lockup kit, if that's possible. K1.com.au um, transmission cooler. Um, Scangauge.com.au for a scan gauge so you can monitor the temperature. I'd suggest that probably could be the first thing you do because there's way too many people that still don't have something in the vehicle to read and clear DTCs, diagnostic trouble codes, right? One day you're gonna wish you had it. I don't know what they're doing this line I'm trying to do. No, it's 110 zone, we're doing 100, so you're distracting me. Anyway, I reckon that's it, I really do. Uh, I don't know what else I could include. Um, what are your questions gonna be? Uh, I wish I knew in advance. I told you so much info in that video. I really don't know what else I can add, so seriously, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you. Oh, last thing. Yes, I'm using a quad block holding this camera on the windscreen. It's an old phone. Um, so if you're watching the end of the video, please write quad block in the comments, as well as whatever else you write, so I know you watch till the end for real. Catch you guys. See you.